Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad. This is the second episode. We were discussing how to raise children um, in an Islamic manner or from an Islamic point of view. Um, the fifth tip uh, in regards to aqidah is basically alarming the children from the dangers of sinfulness in seclusion and uh, creating the awareness that Allah Azza wa Jal sees them wherever they may be. So there isn't a place where you can hide from Allah. And this is a reminder for all of us. It's probably one of the biggest things to be mindful of throughout our lives because the, the sins that people commit in, in, uh, in seclusion or in privacy are obviously more often than the ones that they do publicly because they're not worried about people. But then again, Allah Azza wa Jal is watching us. And so we ask Allah to make us among those who are aware and mindful of that. Instilling that in the children will help you uh, ensure that they don't lie too much. They're gonna, you know, they might pull a couple of stunts here and there, but they will avoid lying, avoid uh, treachery, avoid th stealing, anything that people usually do thinking no one will see them. And so that kind of mentality will help them be more uh, conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore more pious. Sixthly, um, let them often or often mention the name of Allah, especially Bismillah before you eat, before you drink, before you enter uh, the restroom. Uh, teaching them how to say Alhamdulillah when they have done eating. Subhanallah when they've seen something amazing. I mean nowadays kids, you know, the, the local languages, OMG, oh my God, and stuff like that. Okay, that's not a big deal. But where's Subhanallah, where's Alhamdulillah? These expressions have to be used as well. These, these expressions are actually superior. If they wind up mentioning something else every now and then, no issue. But uh, the, the, the house shouldn't be void of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because when Allah is not remembered, the shayateen enter. When the shayateen enter, you're going to have some problems. Seventh, uh, teach your child or your, your uh, son or daughter uh, the love of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by describing his traits and reading his biography and often sending in blessings and salutations and blessings upon him. This is another thing which many p parents may fail in, that they, be here, they might be hearing a lecture or the name of the Prophet ﷺ is mentioned and then you see people too lazy to mention as salat as salam upon the Prophet. And Prophet ﷺ said, this is the miserly one who's, whom in front of whose name my name is mentioned and that he doesn't send salat and salam upon me. And so it is incumbent on us to whenever we hear the name of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or alayhi salatu wa sallam or whichever format that is uh, approved by the sunnah and the children should be following our footsteps in that as well. Eighthly, um, we should teach the children the concept of qad qada and qadar, the preordainment and the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's ironic that my uh, son, seven or eight years old, asked me just uh, yesterday, a very technical question about, you know, the matters of Qadr. That if Allah Azza wa Jal has already decreed everything and then a person winds up killing another person by mistake, then how is it their fault? And because Allah decreed it. It's a very good question actually. And, and many parents fail in answering the question. They don't know how to answer the question. They themselves don't know the concept of Qadr and the difference between what Allah had decreed and what free will we have. Again, I'm not going to give the lecture now, but I do have a lecture on my channel titled... Um, uh, I don't remember what it's titled. We'll put it in the description of this video, inshallah ta'ala. Um, and so you'll become familiar with the concept of Qadr. It's a very, very important topic. It's one of the six pillars of faith. We have to understand it. I'll probably remember the title before we're done with this episode, inshallah. If not, it's okay. Um, ninthly, uh, you have to teach your children the six pillars of Iman. Um, many kids know the five pillars of Islam, but if you ask them the six pillars of Iman, they're like, what are those? And the six pillars of Iman are so important. Islam or the pillars of Islam is the surface. The six pillars of Iman is what makes you a believer. And understanding the, the branches that, that, come all, that come out of this uh, major category, the subcategories, is important. And the children need a lot of time to learn about the angels, the scriptures, the last day, the preordainment, as I mentioned earlier, the books of Allah, the messengers of Allah, believing in Allah Azza wa Jal himself. So all of these are of major importance. The title of the lecture was, Do I Have a Choice? Do I Have a Choice? Yeah, you have a choice to watch it or to ignore me. Uh, tenthly, um, ask, your question, uh, ask your son some easy questions which may be difficult for them. For example, who is your Lord? Uh, what is your religion? 
Who's your prophet? Why were we created? Of course, the, those first three questions are the ones that will be asked in a grave. And they have to know the answers so they can grow up upon his belief system and then they could be able to answer accordingly in the grave. Um, then you can also ask them, what, are, what is kufr? What is nifaq? What is shirk? What are the categories of those? Um, how do you identify you know, a believer from a disbeliever? What makes a person a sincere believer versus a hypocrite? Uh, these are some of the things that a lot of children today unfortunately do not know. They know Fortnite, they know Candy Crush, they know, I don't know, different things, but they don't know uh, the, the basics. And who do we blame? Ourselves. It's the, it's the parents' fault. And we ask Allah Azza wa to rectify our condition and help us uh, improve. But these are the things that we have to be mindful of. There's a time for everything. Let us give each its due time. And inshallah, we'll see you soon in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.